I made my dad choose between me and his new family, after they tried taking over my late mother's house. My father, 52, and I, 25, along with my three-year-old cocker spaniel, Moxie, live in my mom's ancestral house, that I inherited along with other assets when she died when I was 16 due to cancer. My father got married to his high school sweetheart a few months ago while he was on a trip with his friends. Apparently they've been in contact for almost two years now. I was shocked, but it is his life and if he's happy then I'm okay with it. They moved in a week after the small wedding that I wasn't even invited to, since I had no idea that they were even dating or that he was dating. She, my dad's wife that we'll call Steph, 51, came with a baggage, I mean twin stepsisters, 20 females, Lizzie and Lexi and their two chihuahuas, Gucci and Hermes. They go to the state college nearby and thought that it would save them money if they live here instead of paying rent etc. My dad asked if it was okay and he also stated that the house is big enough for us, seven bedrooms, eight and a half baths, a basement and a huge yard with a pool. To make my dad happy I said yes, big mistake. First issue was the argument of me moving to a smaller room, since my room has the second biggest closet out of all the rooms in the house. She needed it to store all her luxury bags and clothes etc. I said no. I told her it's been my room since I can remember and she's not making me move when it's my house. My dad compromised with her that he'll give his side of the closet to her, while his things are in the other room. Second issue, the twins have this habit of barging into people's rooms without knocking and that includes my office, currently working from home due to COVID. Lexi walked in one time wearing a bikini looking for something while I was in the middle of a business meeting. She literally walked behind me where everyone could see her. I was pissed off and so embarrassed. Third, their dogs are not potty trained and would leave poops and pee around the house and the twins wouldn't even clean up after them. They're also very aggressive towards Moxie, I found Moxie one time with a scratch on her left eye where the other two dogs would usually nip it when they get the chance. Fourth, all the family photos in the house were removed and put in the attic without my approval, that includes my grandparents, my great-grandparents, my mother's family photo, my family photo, my baby pictures, etc. I took my time to put them all back to where they belonged. This happened a few times. Two days ago, Steph did it again but this time she replaced them with her pictures, the twins, and her family etc. Steph and I had a heated argument about it. I told her that she can't do anything regarding the decorations in my house without my approval, and that her daughter should also learn how to knock on doors and have their dogs potty trained. She said that they can do whatever they want in her house and that she will be making up house rules that we will all follow, since she thinks I'm such a wild animal doing whatever I want and that I was not raised properly, due to having a bad useless mother. I was livid, that's an understatement. I told her that she can pack her things along with her twins because I'm kicking her out. She said that I have no right to kick them out of her house. I told her and I quote, Lady, you are living under my roof. This is my house. I inherited it from my mother and right now you, your twins, and your dogs are trespassing. Get out before I call the cops. My dad got home early that day after Steph told him what happened. I told him my side of the story. He said that they're still getting used to the house and the move here was difficult for them. I told him about all the issues surrounding them but he keeps insisting that it's going to get better and to just give them some time. I told him that I put up with all their shit and I've had enough. Enough is enough. He was defending them more, taking their side. So, I told him that he can either move out with them or stay and that he has until the end of the week. Did I do the right thing here? Making my dad choose between me and his new family? I literally gave them a chance and I put up with so much of their crap for the past few months. What she said about my mother was my breaking point. There's no way that she will disrespect her in the house where she grew up in, where I grew up in. Quick update, I called the same lawyer that handled my mom's will to review if there's any loophole or any chance that my dad can contest it. I will be seeing her in a couple of hours. Regarding my dad, he's a good man and he's worked hard to provide for me and my needs when my mom died. He's never asked me to tap on my money to help with the living expenses etc. He makes a decent amount of money as an engineer, like six figures, so I don't think he's after my money, I could be wrong though. I just think that he's blinded that someone still finds him attractive at his age, also it didn't help how it was his high school sweetheart. I've also talked to him about his impromptu wedding and how he kept things from me. He just said that he didn't know how I was going to react if I knew that he was dating the ex-girlfriend before he met and married my mom. I was pissed off, but I got over it since he seemed happy having her around. I don't know what their whole history is, or if there's a bad blood between her and my mom to make her lash out like that and disrespect her. Steph and her evil spawns are staying somewhere in town. No idea where and I don't care or want to find out. They have the money to take care of themselves and if they run out, they always have their luxury bags to sell. Honestly. Who need so many bags that they require a whole closet just to store them. If anyone's wondering where my relatives are. Well, my mom was an only child and grandparents left her everything. When my mom died, I got most of what she inherited, she left some to my dad as well. My grandparents on my dad's side live about six hours away with my uncles and aunts. It's literally just me and my dad here, and Moxie. Moxie is doing well. She's happier and seems to enjoy the quietness around the house. Update, I spoke with my mother's previous lawyer, Amy, 
about the issue on Saturday and asked if there's a way to contest the will. She showed me the documents and Mai and I both signed an agreement, in summary, that we agree on what was left to us and that we will not be contesting it in the future. Mom for the win. She also advised to give them at least 30 days to find a place and move out to avoid any legal troubles etc. So, inheritance issue is solved. Saturday night, I was supposed to have dinner with just my dad. Apparently a private discussion between father and daughter is a whole family affair. Steph and twins were there. To make it quick and to end the misery, I stated that I spoke with Amy regarding the house and other legal issues. I also added that they have 30 days to find a place and move out. Steph tried to object, but dad shut her down by saying that we can fix the issue and that we can all go to family therapy, and that we just need time to get to know each other. Cue my eyes rolling. I informed him that it's been months since they moved in and not once did they try to be family unless they need something. I put my foot down. Enough is enough. So, I asked him if he's going with them or staying so I'll know which items he'll be taking. He asked if I'm kicking him out, which I told him I'm not, that he's free to choose to go wherever he goes but I told him that he should not expect me to keep in contact with him if he decides to leave. Steph asked why I'm kicking him out of his house. I told her that I inherited my house from my mother. She said that he told her that I live him, I guess she thought that I live with my dad in his house. Big misunderstanding on their part. Lexi argued that it's going to be hard to move since they're finishing up spring semester and that finals are in a couple of weeks. I just smiled and said to better hurry and find a place. I left after that. Yesterday, Easter Sunday, I invited my boyfriend and his family and my two best friends over to celebrate Easter Sunday. My dad has been calling me and I didn't bother answering the call. He tried to invite me to spend the day with them. As far as I'm concerned, the only family I have right now are my two best friends, my boyfriend and his family. It was a good Sunday, we did some egg hunting and a few games and had a big dinner, which I haven't had in a long time. I felt right. Anyway, right now I'm finishing up on documenting everything that's worth over $500 in the house. I had a few people over to help document them. All locks have been changed. I only gave a copy to my boyfriend, don't worry about my dad asking him about the key, he doesn't approve of him since he's middle class. I also hired professionals to install a security system around the house and property and I am scheduled to meet with someone regarding the fences and gate. I have not tapped into the fund that my mom left since I started college to help with tuition, dorm, and other expenses, but this is an emergency and it calls for it. All the family pictures, portraits, etc. are currently in a storage. All other valuables that are small are in a safety deposit box. All documents are in a water and fireproof safe that requires a key and pin to open, currently in my room. I'm trying to take all the precautions and advice that you guys wrote on the comment section in my previous post. Thank you for that. So, that's about it for now. Not really sure why dad is choosing to be with them than me, his own flesh and blood. I'll update this if there's any news or something stupid happens, but I've come to accept that for some unknown or unexplainable reason, they're more important to him than me. It's hard, since he's the only family I have left here, and I'm really not that close with his side of the family. So, once they move out, I'm cutting contact with them. He's a grown man and he can decide whatever the hell he wants to do with his life. Update, one of my high school friends is a real estate agent and I had her help find them a house nearby about 15 minutes away after thinking through my decisions. I helped with the down payment just to get them started, just so that they don't feel like I didn't help them etc etc. Regarding my dad, we had long discussion about the issue. He moved in with them but we decided that we would have dinner every Sunday night, just us two, and to celebrate any special occasions together. I did remind him that I can't have him or any of his new family in the house after his wife disrespected my mom. I don't know much about their history and I really don't want to find out, but as far as I know and as far as I can remember, my mother was nothing but kind to everyone. She raised me to be that way but I guess she'll be disappointed in me after kicking them out, oh well. He changed his will and added them in, but I advised him not to tell them, I've been watching too much crime stories for the months and I'm just looking out for him. He did say he was proud of my decisions and that I've grown up well and strong and that my mom would be proud of me and what I have accomplished in life so far. After that whole ordeal and after making sure that the house is secure etc, I went on a vacation with my boyfriend, well now fiancé, to unwind and relax. The whole issue took a toll on my mental health and it was a struggle getting back to I guess. Being normal, being my usual self. Also, no wedding bells anytime soon, he's focused on his intern year up in New York pursuing his career in medicine, he wants to be a pediatrician. For all those wondering, he did sign a prenup, he was more than willing to sign it. Also, my mom's side of the family had a big military and finance background, lots of investments and such. I could have followed their footsteps and joined the military, but my hand-eye coordination is abysmal, so that's why I work in finance. I try to not depend on my family's money and learn on how to make my own money through investments, stocks etc. I did take out a little bit to do some remodeling in and around the house. I think that's about it. My dad and I aren't exactly back to our old relationship, I don't think we'll ever get back to it, but we're, hmm, civil about the situation. I've seen Steph and her daughters around town a few times, but I don't acknowledge them, 
Why would I when they took my dad from me? Thank you all for your support and well wishes. It's been hard these past few months, but I am managing. Happy holidays. I thought admiring my girlfriend was sweet, until her friends called me out for being creepy at dinner. I, 34 male, have been with my girlfriend, 30 female, for 9 months now. We have just introduced our friends to each other and everything is going smoothly, and I think she's the one to be honest. My girlfriend has a very pretty face. It's just perfect and I love watching her. She's also very shy and blushes and gets flustered when I look at her more than a few seconds, and she would try to evade my eyes or laugh nervously and kiss me to break the awkwardness, but she never made me feel that I was being out of line or creepy. And I always thought it's her shyness that's causing the awkwardness rather than my gaze and creepiness. But I will be honest here, her shyness adds to her charm and I find it very hot that she's still so shy around me. Last night I was at a restaurant with her closest friends and my girlfriend was telling a story. She was telling the story and blushing and I didn't notice it, but I was probably gazing at her when all of a sudden her best friend shouted, would you stop being so creepy and stop ogling her? Can't you see that she's uncomfortable? The loudest silence followed this and then my girlfriend said that she wasn't uncomfortable at all, but her best friend continued that she has noticed me staring at my girlfriend all evening and that it was very creepy. I told her that she was my girlfriend and that I wasn't staring at a stranger, but then all the girls said that I was wrong. It is wrong to stare like this at a woman even if she's your girlfriend and that I should at least have noticed how my girlfriend was uncomfortable. Another girl's boyfriend told them that was ridiculous and they rounded on him. It turned into a sexual harassment discussion and I felt so embarrassed to be accused of being a creepy dude. I told them that my impression was that my girlfriend was nervous because she was telling a story and everyone was listening, rather than being uncomfortable because of me ogling her. My girlfriend answered in the affirmative and said that she wasn't offended by me. Her best friend didn't want to drop it however so I just yelled at her to shut up. The mood was ruined afterwards and we went our separate ways. I texted my girlfriend that I was sorry for making her uncomfortable and that I wasn't being creepy on purpose. I just love her face. She told me not to worry about it. But the thing is, she must have told her friends something or they wouldn't react so strongly, so she probably thinks and has discussed that I'm being a creep. Or she hasn't told them anything and they made the assessment all on their own and that's even more worrying. What am I doing wrong here? Update, I stated in the comments that I wouldn't make any updates before I've seen my girlfriend and we work conflicting schedules, so today was the first I could see her since the dinner. After pizza and chatting about our days and what we've been up to and after I ogled her for a while, she opened the conversation about the dinner. I played it cool and I was relieved that she was the one to initiate the conversation. She started by apologizing for how her friends treated me. I asked her if there's any truth to what was said and if she felt uncomfortable with me because that's all I've been thinking of, and because I would never forgive myself if I put her in any situation where she felt violated or unsafe. Her eyes were wide with shock and she assured me that she never felt uncomfortable with me, so I asked her why her closest friends would think that to the degree, that they turned the subject into a sexual harassment argument. She said that she was appalled by what her best friend has said. When we started dating and it got serious between us, she told her friends that I always looked at her in a way that made her feel like she's the prettiest in the world, and that she felt so insecure because she's not used to that. She also loved how I even embraced her shyness instead of being weirded out by her awkwardness. So I asked if anything of what she told them could have given them the idea that I was making her uncomfortable. She said absolutely not, she didn't know where that came from and even when she confronted her best friend, she didn't get a real reason to why her best friend freaked out on us. Her best friend just, thought I was being creepy, and then later she told my girlfriend that she thought that I was a bully who ridiculed her and yelled at her. Here's my theory, this best friend is a see you next Tuesday. She works hard to be in the spotlight. She used me to start an argument and steal the show and probably it was because she couldn't take that my girlfriend was the star of the dinner, the dinner was about my girlfriend introducing her boyfriend to the group. And she was prepared to do anything and go any length including treating me like a predator. I know that I made it worse by making fun of her and her ridiculous accusations, because it made me look like I was making fun of sexual harassment, and made the other friends pissed, but I still don't regret putting her in her place when I told her to shut up. I didn't discuss this with my girlfriend. I asked her why she's friends with someone who's so unlike her. She thought for a while and said that she loved her. They have been friends for so long, and while she's aware of her bad traits, she's also a kind and loyal friend who'd be here when you need her. So I guess I'm gonna have to live with this woman in my life. I will try to avoid her as much as I can and take everything she says or does with a bit of salt, or sugar if that's what it takes. By the way for the few who got offended by my love for my girlfriend's face and called me shallow, relax. Although I love her face, it's not the thing I love the most about her. It's not even the body part I love the most about her. But maybe top 5? My daughter's father wants to use my daughter as a therapy doll for his wife that recently lost a child. I, 33 female, I'm going to preface this by saying my 6-year-old daughter's father, 37 male, who I'm going to call Jeff, has never been my romantic partner. We had a one-night stand. I don't like people calling him my ex, since it makes it seem we had some kind of emotional attachment. He was never involved after I told him I was pregnant, and actually wanted me to terminate the pregnancy, but I decided to raise my child alone since I have enough money to raise her without child support. For the whole pregnancy in the first four years, Jeff was not in the picture. On my mother's recommendation, I did send him pictures and invited him to special events, but he always replied he had no interest in my daughter. Two years ago he reappeared and began demanding parental rights. When I didn't do what he wanted, he sued and was told no, he was not getting parental rights. He was given the offer to pay child support and then we can revisit giving him actual rights, but he has refused. He has the money, much more than me, but he refuses. I still offered to let him see my daughter in a casual manner, no child support needed, 
with the agreement anything legal, medical, or educational will not involve him. He pushed the boundaries and we had a fallout. After that, we didn't hear from him for almost six weeks before he called to meet for Christmas. After much discussion, I agreed to bring my daughter over on the condition my daughter's godparents could come. Thus we went over for Christmas dinner. And finding out Jeff is married and had never told his family he had a child. It was great to be judged by a bunch of strangers. It was uncomfortable the whole time. I'm going to use fake names, but let's say my daughter's name is Katie. His wife kept calling my daughter Gabrielle. Not the actual name she used, but it was that different to my daughter's name. The wife was also very physical, trying to pick up my daughter or parent her. I would block her or tell her to please let me deal with my child. The whole time she'd pretty much ignore me, but Katie didn't seem nervous, I decided to just bid my time. I hit my limit when my daughter said she needed the bathroom and this stranger went, Oh Gabby you need potty? Let mommy change you. My daughter hasn't worn diapers in a while now and she's more than capable of going alone to the bathroom. I immediately told her to stay away from my daughter and that we were leaving. The woman started wailing that I was kidnapping her baby girl and tried to lunge at me. Her in-laws got in the middle and held her, consoling her and saying that we weren't leaving and for her to calm down like she was the victim. At that point I just glared at Jeff and told him he'd better explain or I would be calling the police. He asked me to speak in private in another room and that I could just leave my daughter with his parents. No way that would ever happen. Katie's godparents took her with them despite the wife having a full meltdown. Jeff and I spoke outside and he explained that he and his wife recently lost a daughter. I'm not going to give specific details on that, all I'll say is that it was sudden and nobody's fault. And as I can only imagine it had caused some psychological issues to his wife. Apparently he had the brilliant idea that having Katie pass as their lost child would help his wife. Without telling me. And that's why he wanted visitations and parental rights. He pleaded for me to leave my daughter with him for a little bit. I asked him what was his plan when his wife heals. His response was disgusting, well, I'll just send Katie back with you and it will be just like before. I told him he was insane if he thought I would let him use my daughter like that. What his wife needs is therapy with a professional, not feeding her delusions. And I would not let that woman within miles from my daughter. He told me I was being cruel and didn't know the pain of losing a child. I agreed with him, but reminded Jeff that my priority is not his family, it's my child. What he and his family do to work through their grief has nothing to do with us. I also told him to call his lawyer because I am making sure he never has contact with my child. So that's what I'm bracing for. He's been blasting my phone since Christmas, but I can easily ignore him. My daughter and I are doing a small travel vacation. Edit to add, my daughter is set for life monetarily. She has a trust and I make really good money in my position. If she was 18 right now, I could put her through college without a loan. She doesn't need child support for quality of life. If I could get child support and never worry about her father trying something, I would be suing him in a heartbeat. But after talking to a lawyer and realizing the risk, I've taken the decision that child support or possible inheritance is not worth my child's safety. Safety is always first. Update, hey everyone, I decided to post a last update, since I will be going full silent for a long period. For those that didn't know, I'm right now dealing with my daughter's father and his delusion. He wants to use my daughter as a therapy doll for his wife that recently lost a child. A lot of people were worried for my daughter and me, and I truly appreciate it. We're both safe, she's currently having a great vacation with her godparents, and I'm currently making my own arrangements to move on. My lawyer is working hard on keeping everything in order. I know a cease and desist was his first action and we are going for no contact. He says we have a solid case and hopefully this will be resolved relatively fast. And by that I mean a year or two. We did get a temporary restraining order. It's only until our first court date, but after it could be extended. I haven't had direct contact with Jeff. He lawyered up to and tried to send a threat to take full custody. My lawyer laughed at it since his reasoning was parental alienation. Except I have proof I tried for years to have him involved. Apparently turning in a few emails showing my attempts was enough to get them to change parental alienation to a different reasoning. My lawyer is not worried in all honesty. For now I've decided after much thinking that moving is going to be necessary. It won't be something I can do on a whim but I'll be looking into new houses within the month to hopefully move sometime this year. School will remain the same, but we will be speaking to the admin to make sure only certain people can pick her up, and part of that decision has been to hire a private driver. He's someone I absolutely trust and has worked for relatives in the past, so I'm very comfortable with the idea and so is my daughter. Now I just have to make sure they don't go for fast food every day after school. Things in all honesty are not that scary right now. I have a good lawyer, good evidence, and my little girl is happy and healthy, so I'm just going to focus on working things little by little. Because of the legal proceedings I don't think I'll be posting any updates anytime soon. And to those sending me private messages telling me I'm horrible for keeping my daughter from her father or telling me I shouldn't have had her in the first place, please kindly speak to the void. I'm too busy. I got tested to donate a kidney to my wife, and found out that we might be related. I don't know how to tell her. I decided to get tested to see if I could donate my kidney to my wife of 6 years. We have two kids together, four female and two male. 
My wife got sick just after our son was born and now is in need of a kidney transplant. We checked with her relatives and none were a match or a viable donor. Last week I got tested. I knew it would be a long shot so I decided to get tested to see if I could donate. I got a call the other day saying that I was a match. The doctor then said something about wanting to do additional testing due to some information from the HLA tissue test results. I didn't think much of it and agreed. Then the results came in and I was shocked and confused. He explained that because of how DNA information is passed down through generations, a parent to a child could have at least a 50% match. Siblings could have a 0-100% to match. It was rare to have a high match as a husband and wife. I asked what does that mean? He said that my wife and I have an abnormally high match percentage. Long story short, we're related. No I'm not kidding. I was put up for adoption before I was born. Placed into a family that moved across the country. I knew I was adopted but we didn't have any information about my bio family. It was a closed adoption. I met my wife by chance 8 years ago. I was on a trip from work and she was working at the site I went to. We worked together for a week. We exchanged numbers, kept in touch, and I was sent back there three more times that year and each time we became closer. I was given the opportunity to be transferred out there for a new higher paying position in the same department as her, and the rest is history. I don't know what to do moving forward but I know it may be wrong. She is my wife and the mother of our kids. Edit to add, my only family is from my adopted parents. My parents adopted me two minutes after I was born. Their name is on my birth certificate. They have not told me anything about my bio parents and don't have any info. Her family is not a match, as stated above, most of her family has low match potential or can't donate due to medical or other reasons. I am two years older than my wife. All I know is that my wife was born when her parents were late teens. Update two weeks later, yes, I am stressed and freaking out. Yes, I can play the banjo. No, there was no genetic test when we got married. Our state stopped that in the 1990s. No, my wife has never been stuck in the dryer, but she once got stuck under the bed. Joke. The reason her family couldn't donate was because close relatives had some medical issues that prevent them from donating. Examples include, high blood pressure, diabetes, cancer, heavy drinkers, and more. The further out we tested, the less percent of a match. I wanted to be tested because we needed to find someone. The doctor said it would be unlikely but wouldn't hurt to try. I was freaking out after I got the news and had to get outside advice. When the doctor said that the percentage was abnormally high and that we might be related, I kind of zoned out and started to piece things together in my mind. My parents live a thousand miles away. They met my in-laws a few times. Once at my wedding and when both my children were born. My children are fine. My daughter is incredibly smart for her age. My son is a handful and healthy. The way my adoption worked was when my bio mom gave birth to me, I was checked out and put in a different room. I was there but don't know how it officially worked. From what my parents explained, they were in that room waiting. They never met my bio mom in person. My bio mom only had a profile and was picked out of many candidates. I called my parents and told them that I needed to know everything they knew about my bio mom. They told me that they had limited knowledge. They said she was a single mom that was 16 years old. The father was not in the picture. Also, I was born in a hospital one hour from where my wife was born. Like I said, limited knowledge. Growing up I didn't want to find out about my bio parents. To me, my parents were always my parents. I knew I was adopted and that it was a closed adoption. I figured it wouldn't matter long term. I'm not going to do an additional at-home DNA test through any of the traditional testing sites like 23 or Ancestry due to personal reasons. Like the possibility of the family finding out. The doctor said all of this to only me, not with my wife present. Some of the additional tests were done through the doctor which was the CM test? I'm not an expert on DNA testing, they said it was like a 1900 plus CM match. This basically confirms one of my bio parents is one of hers. It can also mean first cousins or aunt or uncle, I'm guessing her dad. When my kids were born my parents brought photos of me as a baby and commented that me and my son looked a lot like my wife's dad. My son was easily explainable. But all three of us are a different story. I'm not going to bring this up ever. I might look at my father-in-law differently, but hopefully nothing will change. I hope none of the family goes on Reddit and connects the dots. I am donating my kidney to my wife. We have started the full process. That takes time and a lot of preparation. I plan on talking to my wife after the surgery and after recovery. We will decide what to do with our kids. If we are going to get them tested or ever tell them. I will not be leaving my wife. I love and will always be there for her. I made vows and I will keep them. I love her more than I would a half-sister. Edit to add, I do plan on telling her after the surgery. She is not doing well and I think this will be even harder on her. I would rather her know that I love her as a husband rather than flip her world upside down right before a life-changing and dangerous surgery. Telling our kids is not a decision I'm going to make on my own. It will be a joint decision after my wife knows. New update. Okay, first, my wife and I did go through with a transplant. We both are recovering, and have recovered well now. My wife is the healthiest she has been since just after our son was born. So I kept to my original plan. I did not tell my wife about the possibility of us being related until after the surgery. Before the surgery, my parents came into town as soon as they could. It really helps having a big family support system like we have. The days leading up to the surgery seemed like there just wasn't enough time in the day for everything. With 900 doctor's appointments, getting things prepared for worst case scenarios, researching, setting up my parents, and other family, in our house to watch our kids, and just spending time together as a family. The doctors were fantastic and laid everything out in a professional but relatable fashion. They answered all the questions and concerns we had leading up to, during, and post-operation. It was one of the best feelings seeing my wife hopeful for the first time in a long time.
I knew I wouldn't be able to live with myself if I took that away from her. In the days leading up, I decided I was going to write a letter to my wife if things went bad for me, but she survived. I wrote her six pages. In it, I told her how much I loved her. How much she changed me from the moment we met. How she was my universe. But also how sorry I was for keeping a secret from her and lying to her. Went into details of what I found out over the last week. How we might be related and all the evidence. I gave it to my parents to give to her if something were to happen to me. But if we both didn't make it, then to read it with my in-laws. I also made other letters. The surgery went well for both of us. They said my organs look mighty fine. The transplant worked out rather quickly for my wife, and her body accepted it. I ended up scratching my eye pretty bad, and they put an eye patch on me. So when I saw my wife for the first time, her first words to me were, the doctors knew we were here for the kidney, right? Recovery overall sucks. There was virtually no position that was comfortable. I felt like a baby because my wife never complained and was healing well and taking it easy. Me on the other hand, am not so smart and decided I should go against doctor's orders and did not take it easy and ended up having to go to the ER and have a secondary surgery to repair damages I caused. Please listen to your medical professionals. Now on to what y'all really care about. During recovery, my wife got into TikTok and Reddit. Well, after some time, she found a little post that made it way bigger than I ever intended. Looking back, I should have been more careful. During this time, she started to ask more in-depth questions about my adoption. My parents were still at the house at this point. Parents answered all the questions. My wife used the excuse of wanting to put a memory book together for our kids and wanted to include a family history of us growing up and including our parents who raised us. She knew most of this info but wanted more details. She asked her dad about more details of his childhood, how he met my mother-in-law, if my mother-in-law was his first relationship. She knew some, but I was learning a lot. Also a reminder, my wife was born when her parents were older teens. I'm older than her. He said no, mother-in-law was not his first relationship. We ended up pulling out his old year books of his from high school, and he showed us the girl who was his first real relationship. I knew she was probably my bio mom. I could see features that I have in her. He told us fond memories he had of her. He said their relationship ended because of her parents, and he never saw her again. He tried finding out what happened to her but couldn't, this was before the internet. Shortly after that, he asked out my mother-in-law, and here we are. We got my father-in-law's side, then my mother-in-law said, now let me tell you how it really happened. She proceeded to tell us a different story that was more believable. Nothing about all of this was a red flag indicating that my wife knew my secret. But after that visit, I felt extremely guilty. She was healthier than she had been in years out of the major danger zone. So I had no real excuse not to tell her anymore. It took me two additional weeks to finally tell her. She noticed I was acting off and finally asked me if I was okay. I said I needed to talk to her about something serious, possibly life-altering, and potentially a relationship-ending topic. But, that I love her and will do absolutely everything she decided from that point forward. She told me that was not a good start to a conversation and asked if I wanted to try again. So I gave her the letter I had written before the surgery. She went from curious, to happy, to crying, to intense concentration, to unreadable. In my head, I basically handed her divorce papers, and I would never see her or my kids again. Our life that we have built just got nuked, I'm dramatic in my head. When I get nervous, I pace back and forth. When she finished reading it, she took a moment then came over to me, stopped me from pacing. Said to look at her, smile with a genuine smile, and said you are the dumbest, smart person I know. Then kissed me. This started a long conversation. She came across my first post, after the surgery, and found it oddly specific to our situation. Even though I changed some facts and circumstances. She connected the dots. This started her trying to find out if it was true, if I would eventually tell her or continue to lie and hide it from her. She reassured me that it changed nothing in our relationship. She is my wife. I am her husband. She will always have a piece of me with her at all times. She said that she doesn't view it as wrong because we did not grow up together, we didn't know, and it is a bit too late to back out now. We decided to have our kids do genetic testing when they are more age appropriate. Mainly for the unknown for me being adopted. We are not, for now and possibly forever, telling anyone. We also looked up who we now suspect is my bio mom. What we found was that she ended up passing a few years ago due to a drunk driver, but I possibly have two other half-sisters. So, I have dating options down the road if needed. Wife hit me when I told her this. The kids are doing really well. All they know is that mommy is doing better and enjoying spending more time with her and the extra energy and playfulness that she hasn't had in a while. They are doing really well. So, all in all, the best case scenario happened. My wife and I are doing really well. We are probably the closest we have been in a long time. I asked her to marry me again. She said she would think about it paused for like 5 long seconds, and of course, yes, I will marry you. I'm not as afraid as I was about family finding or seeing this post. I now have a goddess-like force to have my back if I or we ever get questioned. We have made contingency plans. Like I said, I probably won't update again. I thank you all. My wife is not the same woman I used to know. She let the money and status get to her. I met my wife when I was 15 in high school, she was 17. That later part of my teenage years was probably the hardest of my life, since in half a year I lost my mother. Never knew my dad so she was the only thing I could consider family. At that time, me and my wife were only friends, but she was there for me, and grieved with me. I think I started developing feelings for her during that time. We started dating when I was 17, and we got married 7 years later. For context, my wife was very frugal and unmaterialistic. She never cared about clothes, makeup, brands, cars, etc. 
always spending money on thrift shops or during sales on whatever she liked. I remember trying to impress her with my 370Z just for her to react with, what car is this? A Corolla? So yeah, I think you get the type. But that's what I liked about her the most, and also, she was the most caring person I ever knew. In our family, she's the successful one, always working in big corporations. Regarding myself, I always worked as a community first responder for my local hospital. The salary wasn't high, but I loved my job, helping people as I could. Fast forward, two years ago she received an offer from an important company for an executive position, offering four, yes, four, times her salary, and let me tell you, her salary wasn't bad by any means. But this meant we would have to move to a different city. At first, I was doubtful, since that would have meant losing my job and not be sure if I could have contributed financially to our family for an indefinite time period, but she said that she could have sustained the family effortlessly with this new job, and for that time I could have looked after the house and groceries, till I could have found a new job. Since she was so enthusiastic, I accepted. I was happy to support my wife's carrier. Well, the best way I can put it is that my wife underwent a crazy transformation. Some Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde type thing, if you know what I mean. She started caring more and more about luxury brands, jewels, cars, etc. I don't think you can quite imagine my disbelief seeing her coming back home with a Versace bag after seeing her for years wearing $10 coats from our local thrift shop. She also started hanging out with her new female co-workers a lot. My wife isn't very extroverted or very social, so that was quite the shock, but I was very very happy for her. I thought that she finally found her dimension after years of struggling. But that happiness started fading after she started coming home way later and later every day. And later. And later. Until it was a miracle to be able to talk to her for 10 minutes a day. I thought it was her being very busy with work, since well-being an executive means lots of work, till she started posting lots of photos of her with her co-workers drinking, going shopping and stuff. The fun part is, she never finds time to reply to my text, but she always has a minute to post photos. And when she replies, she says that she's working. She also literally stops saying things to me altogether. Have you ever experienced your wife or husband going to work with an Audi A3 and then coming back home with a Porsche Macan GTS? Well, I did, and let me tell you. It's no fun. I confronted her on if it was a business-issued car, which it isn't, then on why she spent so much money on a car when she didn't care not even a little about cars. Her passive-aggressive response was that it's her money and that she's entitled to do as she pleases. Or have you experienced not seeing your wife or husband coming back home for a night and not replying to text, just to receive a call the following afternoon saying that she forgot to tell me that she left for a business trip? Well, I hope you haven't. But the worst is when she invited me for lunch with her co-workers. I was very happy because that was the first time we were doing something together in months, and I thought that what I've experienced before was only a phase and that it was all ended. My wife left first because she had work to do, so I dressed up nicely and left two hours after to the scheduled restaurant. For context, I sold my 370Z years before because I didn't need a sports car no more, so my daily driver is a very frugal Renault Clio. I like it, and since I don't need that much, I don't have reasons to upgrade to a pricer model or brand. Well, I get to the restaurant, park my car in front of it, get inside just to see my wife staring at me, like horror-stricken. She gets up from the table and takes me outside of the restaurant, then proceeds to literally insult me for parking my Clio in front of the restaurant and in front of her table, saying that I embarrassed her and that I should have parked it somewhere hidden. I was completely at a loss for words. I asked her why, and she said that it was a cheap, non-luxury car, not representative of her lifestyle. She then gets back inside the restaurant, warning me not to embarrass her like this again. I attended the rest of the lunch in shock. That day I realized that that girl I had at my side wasn't my wife. It wasn't the girl I married anymore. My wife is now out of the house, celebrating a great year for the company, and I'm here at home writing this with the divorce papers in front of me. I don't think I can handle this situation anymore. I tried lots and lots of times to talk to her, to tell her how I feel, to tell her that she changed, that she's not the same woman I knew. But she just doesn't listen. She always says that she has no time and that she needs to work, or she tries to minimize the situation saying that it's not true and that she never changed. She wanted kids, now she doesn't want them anymore, saying that they would rob her time from her career. She wanted to travel, now she doesn't want to do it, for the same reason. Is she really the same woman I married? But still, I can't bring myself to talk about divorce with her. Most likely because I hope that somewhere hidden inside of her there's still the woman I loved and still love. Even if this doesn't seem like the case. Update. Well, after that business party my wife didn't come back home. I tried contacting her since I was very worried but she didn't pick up the phone not even once. She came back home in the morning exactly when I was about to leave for her workplace to ask about her. I asked her what happened, and she said she stayed at this female co-worker's house since she drank a lot and she was in no condition to drive, fair enough. I told her that she could have sent a text to warn me, and that I would have gone to get her. Her response was with what? The Clio? I stood there in silence, and she later said that she forgot about warning me. I asked how she was feeling, only to be answered in monosyllables. We minded our own business for a while, then she comes to me and she says she has something to discuss. I tell her that I have something to discuss with her too. And well, would you look at that? She asked for a divorce. I wasn't expecting that at all. I asked her why, and her reply was that after talking to her friends she understood that I wasn't fit to be her husband, that we have different values and different lifestyles, and that she deserves a man of a similar worth compared to her. She was just waiting for the right time to bring it up, and after the party she made up her mind. I'm going to be completely honest, that was a low blow, but I just smiled at her. I tried talking to her, 
proposing to separate for a while to see how things go, I even proposed couples therapy like someone suggested, but she was dead set on it. So I calmly told her everything I needed to say, from the fact that I was thinking about divorce too to the fact that I felt like she changed, concluding saying that I'm sure she will find an awesome man since I know her worth, having been her husband for more than 9 years, but that I know what I'm worth too. We decided to separate for the moment, and we will arrange the divorce later on, since she has no time now, but we have a verbal agreement on some things. I decided to go back to my hometown to relax and to decide what's next for me. I should be able to regain my previous position in the hospital, but it's all to see. Also, one of my friends there offered to host me until I found housing. I'm really grateful to him. But well I understood that my wife couldn't care less about me when the lengthiest discussion we had concerned who was taking the dog. For context, we got him a month after moving since she always wanted one and to keep me some company. But in two years, she probably spent the equivalent of two hours with him. I always took care of him and well, he's been a more than loyal companion in those two years. So, she widowy made a fuss about the fact that I couldn't take the dog with me, for maybe half an hour or so. I told her that I didn't care at all, I was taking him with me since she doesn't have time to care for him, and it was very strange for her to say those things when she didn't care not even a bit about him for two years. So I packed the necessary stuff and before leaving, I asked her if she was cheating on me, and she denied. And I will trust her on that. I read a lot of people in the previous post talking about hiring a private investigator, but I'm not going to do that. I trust what she said, and even if it wasn't the truth, I honestly don't want to hear anything about it. It would only make me feel worse. I feel calm, but inside I feel like I've lost an important piece of myself. The things she said didn't hurt me initially, however the more I think about them, the more heartbroken I feel. But I'm trying to focus on nicer thoughts, like meeting one of my old friends which I haven't seen in a long time. I'm still trying to process everything, it all happened so fast. Though I must say that seeing my dog so happy inside the Clio brightened up my mood a lot. He loves car rides. Even if things went down this road, I still wish her all the best. I could never forget what she did back then for me and in general in those 16 years spent together as a couple. I may do another update in the future about how things went, but for now, goodbye. I will take some time to focus on myself and on the upcoming divorce. Again, thanks to everyone. Take care. My boyfriend bought his female best friend a Tiffany necklace for her birthday. I feel weird about it. I just want to know if I'm blowing this out of proportion before I overreact. My boyfriend, 27 male, of 11 months has a best friend, a girl best friend. I, 27 female, have been totally fine with this from the beginning because she was here before me and they've been friends since college. Although, I feel it's important to add that they've never had the chance to date because they were both in relationships when they met. She's also been single for the past three months. Her birthday is this Friday and my boyfriend wanted to get her something really special. I thought that was sweet of him until I realized what he had bought her. Now I feel like it's extremely inappropriate and at the risk of sounding like a beach, I want him to take it back. He claims she's been wanting this specific necklace from Tiffany's forever, so he bought it for her. He refused to tell me how much he spent on it but I found an identical one on their website and it cost $250. To put it mildly, my boyfriend's really excited to give it to her. He says it's also a thank you gift for helping get him through a couple crappy semesters at graduate school. She's extremely smart and was in the same program. Okay, fine, but a necklace? Why not a gift card or something less romantic? She wants to have a friend date with him on Thursday as an early birthday celebration, so he's taking her out for lunch or dinner on Thursday, which means they're going to get drunk. I've never had a problem with this girl but I don't like how close they are. She's always been nice to me but I can't help but feel like they might have some underlying feelings for each other. How can I solve this? Perhaps, I could suggest to him that we both get her something and then have him take back the necklace while we still have time? Any ideas? Update, I had a sit-down talk with my boyfriend this afternoon. He was very supportive and understanding, for the most part. I explained my feelings to him regarding the Tiffany Hart necklace, and he immediately agreed to return it. He seemed really disappointed over it but he said he understood where I was coming from. So what we were going to do was buy her something together as a couple. We had already come up with a list of ideas and planned to go shopping tomorrow until the friend date. This is where things got ugly. I explained that I was uncomfortable with the situation because I said I felt like she had feelings for him, which he disagreed with. I asked him if it was okay if I came along and he said, probably. But I should tell her first. So I told him to text her and ask if it was okay, which he did right in front of me. Immediately, she replied, I guess. With a sad face. As we were sitting there talking, she sent a second text that said, why can't it just be you and me? He replied and said he wanted me to come with them, which seemed to piss her off because the next thing she sends is, weird. So if I invite you to that concert next month, it better be just you and me. I already bought you a ticket. He responds and says he can't promise anything. Next thing you know, she texts, great. So in other words, your girlfriend's being a beach and not letting you see me alone. I have to go to work, we'll talk tonight. The heck? This just proves she's a snake. I told my boyfriend I wasn't going to put up with it and that he needs to start making some hard decisions. Immediately, he agreed and said he'd fix things. He said he'd end the friendship if he had to in order to keep me. So I guess they're going to meet up and talk tomorrow. Oh, and screw her birthday. Final update, I apologize in advance if this comes out to be a huge mess. 
It turns out, he's not as innocent as I had previously thought and now I look like the fool here. Last night, I stayed at his place and we talked some more. He said he was going to return the necklace first thing this morning. Well, he lied. I went over to his place on my lunch hour and the damn thing was still laying on his nightstand. He claims he forgot to take it back and will have to do it later. In my gut, I felt like he was stalling me and I was right. As I mentioned in my prior post, my boyfriend and his best friend were going to have a talk today. I honestly believed he was going to distance himself from her and explain to her that her actions were inappropriate. Well, that didn't happen. After two hours without hearing anything from him, I texted him to find out what was going on because I wanted to see him tonight after their talk. He responded and said he just wanted to have a night to himself. Right away, alarm bells are going off in my head because he's sending me short texts and is barely answering any of my questions. I told him his evasive behavior was really beginning to worry me and he replied, I'm sorry. I'm just confused. I texted back, what do you mean you're confused? Confused about what? He took forever to respond but eventually admitted he was confused about our relationship. Instead of fighting over text, I went over to his place to figure out what the problem was. After lots of arguing, he finally gave me the truth. Apparently, during their talk this afternoon, she told him she's had feelings for him since college and it's gotten to the point now where it's hard for her to be around him. I asked him if the feelings were mutual and he replied, I don't know, in other words, yes. I asked what else was said during this talk and he said she basically feels bad because she feels like she's ruining our relationship and getting in between us. Well, no crap. That's when he brought up the idea of us possibly going on a break so he can sort their friendship out. I told him I would never agree to something like that because it just gives him a license to sleep with her, which brought up my next point. I asked if he ever cheated on me with her and suddenly he became very defensive. He said they only fooled around back when he was single. Funny how he never mentioned that before. I told him I didn't believe him because of how defensive he was. He then admitted that she kissed him during their talk but he pulled away after a couple of seconds because he felt bad. But that's all that happened. Yeah, I'm not stupid. Even if it was just a kiss, he should have made it clear to her that he wasn't interested. Not this I don't know if I have feelings for her bull crap. At that point, I told him we were done, our relationship is over. I don't want to be in a relationship with someone I cannot trust. He didn't even fight for me. All he did was apologize and said he didn't mean to hurt me. Whatever. It's all bull crap. All the signs were there but I chose to ignore them. The flowers, the watch, the heart necklace, the way she acted around him, etc. All the signs were there. I'm really trying to look at the bright side. I know I deserve better. I already feel like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. My relationship wasn't going anywhere, especially with her in the picture and I should have ended it much earlier. I'm extremely grateful that this happened now and not a couple years down the road when we were engaged or something. I have plenty of great friends and family to lean on for support, so everything will be fine. I'm moving on for good. Thank you everyone for your help over the past couple of days. It's been really therapeutic writing all of this stuff down. My friend confessed she loves me four weeks before her marriage, and the guilt is getting to me. I don't know if I should tell her husband. My, 35 male, friend Bree, 35 female, just told me she loves me four weeks before her marriage, and I am not sure what I am supposed to do here. I want to know if I am doing the right thing. To give some context, I lost my wife two years ago. I have a five-year-old daughter. I have not dated in the last two years because I have major trauma from losing my wife. I still love her a lot and don't think I am ready to move on. I invested all my time in my daughter, who looks exactly like her mother, and my work to keep my sanity for the last two years. I have been friends with Bree since we were in elementary school. We lived in the same neighborhood growing up and were best friends. She is an awesome person, and we were inseparable growing up. The weirdest part was we had completely different personalities, she was very outgoing and always had a lot of friends. I am a big introvert and Bree along with a few friends was all I needed. B was a serial dater and I don't remember any time since middle school where she was single. Bree and I never dated though. Bree and I also went to the same college. She never had a stable boyfriend, but just jumped from one relationship to another. I, on the other hand, did not date seriously until I was in my junior year. When I met my wife, she was a freshman and we hit it off instantly. We fell for each other and spent all our time with each other. This strained my relationship with Bree as I would generally hang out with my wife instead of her. That was the time Bree and I slowly started drifting apart. After college, I moved to a different town for my job, and Bree and I occasionally messaged each other, but nothing beyond that. Bree attended my wedding and that was the last time I saw her. We kept in touch, but mostly by commenting on each other's pictures or keeping each other updated on significant life events. Bree did reach out to me when my wife passed away and we talked on a phone call. Last year, Bree and her fiancé moved to my city. I was still grieving, and both of them have been amazing support for me and my daughter. My daughter loves dancing, and Bree helped me enroll her in dancing and gymnastics classes and sometimes takes her to them. I also became good friends with her fiancé, who is indeed an incredibly good man. My daughter also loves Annie Bree and Bree sometimes helps me babysit. Last week, Bree came to my house and asked if we could talk. Her tone sounded serious. She told me that over the last few months, she feels like she has started to develop feelings for me and is not sure anymore if she wants to go ahead with the wedding. She felt I also had started developing feelings for her. 
I told her that I am not ready for any relationship and that dealing with my mental health is my top priority, for which I go to a therapist regularly. She tried to convince me that she loved me, we are soulmates, and she felt that we were meant to be together. However, I do not have the same feelings for her. I love her as a friend, but nothing beyond that. We were both emotional, but she said she was glad we talked about this and she left after that. Brie called me that night and told me not to talk about our conversation to anyone. I thought a lot about it and decided that I would not tell her fiancé about mine and Brie's conversation from last week. I feel it's their relationship, and I do not have the right to ruin their moment if Brie decides to go ahead with the wedding. However, I feel guilty that her fiancé does not know anything about this and is going into a marriage where Brie might not be fully ready. Would I be wrong for not telling her fiancé about our conversation? Update one month later, I finally called Brie after a few days and asked her to meet me for lunch. I talked to her and asked her if she was going ahead with her wedding. She broke down and told me she was not sure. I told her that she should at least talk to Jason regarding her feelings and not be dishonest with him. I also assured her that I would not say anything to Jason, but I just wanted her to be happy. She said she understood and left. That night I put my daughter to sleep and was watching TV. Around 9.30 p.m., I heard a loud knock on my door, and it was Jason. I opened the door, and he was in tears. He started yelling at me and asking me why I had to steal Brie out of all the people. I tried to calm him down, but he just kept on shouting. I was trying to get him to sit down on the bench on our porch. I told him my daughter was sleeping upstairs, but he slowly was getting more and more physical. He punched me in the face, and I was able to push him off. I told him to get out of my house, and he got in his truck and drove away. I immediately called Brie, and she was crying and did not sound well on the phone. She told Jason that she could not marry him, because she had feelings for me. I was really scared for her, after the physical altercation with Jason, and told her to gather some clothes and get out of the house. She did that and came to my place. I just didn't feel she was safe with Jason. I consoled her for almost two hours and was able to get her to sleep. The next morning, we had to call her parents to let them know about what had happened. Brie kept a brave face, but I could see how much she was hurting. Her parents asked her to take a few days off, and immediately come back home, and she did take a flight in the evening to go home. Over the next two weeks, the wedding was called off. Brie and I were talking every day and she was just very exhausted. She talked to Jason a few times and kept on asking her to take more time to think. However, I think Brie just wanted to get out of it and decided to just break it off with Jason completely. Currently, Brie has been staying with us for the last two weeks. She still has a job here and started going back to work last week. I have talked to Brie in detail about what happened. Brie told me that Jason and her were dating on and off for the last four years. Jason is not very career-oriented, and Brie is very good at her job. She felt he was a nice and reliable person, but was unsure about him from the start. She felt that she was not getting any younger, and hence they decided to get married. When she heard about my wife passing away, she just felt really bad and wanted to be around me to comfort me. When she got her big promotion, which meant she could work in a corporate office, she immediately chose my city and moved here. Jason also moved here and got a new job. She never had any romantic feelings for me back then. As she started hanging out with my daughter and me, she started feeling the bond we shared when we were growing up. Except, I was the broken one and she was taking care of me. She said that she realized that she was enjoying her time with us, more than her time with Jason. She realized she made a mistake with Jason, and what she wanted was right in front of her. Hence, she slowly started thinking about me in that way and finally told me about it. She knew her relationship with Jason was over the moment she confessed to me. It's a crappy situation, but I am glad that she realized that before getting married versus after. As for Jason, I feel bad for him. He is moving back to our hometown closer to his family. He is currently in their apartment and will move sometime next month. I know a lot of you would be curious if we were dating. We are not dating. I don't think I can date anyone right now and neither should Brie. She is my friend, and I am happy that she is staying with us, and plans to be here until everything is sorted out. My daughter loves having Auntie Brie around too, so that's a bonus. Plus, it's really nice to see her slowly get back to normal. Thanks again for helping me during my last post. Cheers. My ex-girlfriend told me my current girlfriend sabotaged our relationship. I, 28 male, am really confused about the events over the last month. My ex-girlfriend Julie, 29 female, thinks that my current girlfriend Mindy, 28 female, is manipulative and sabotaged our four-year relationship. I was in a loving relationship with Julie for the last four years. We met through some mutual friends. Julie and I were very compatible in terms of our love for outdoor activities and running. We have very similar lifestyles and supported each other well for the last four years. We have also been living together for the last three years. We even discussed getting married during the summer. Everything was great and I was planning to propose to her over the holidays. However, I started to see changes in behavior in Julie around September. She was acting distant and looked stressed. It was quite noticeable and I was worried. I trust her with all my heart and I could not imagine she would be cheating on me. However, she did spend more time by herself. Around the same time, Julie's friend Mindy messaged me privately and asked me if I could meet her secretly, as she wanted to tell me something about Julie. Mindy and Julie work together and I have known Mindy ever since I started dating Julie. I was surprised, but to be honest, I assumed the worst. I met her at a cafe after work. She asked me if things were going okay between Julie and I. She told me that Julie told her that she was planning to leave me soon. This was a total shock to me. I asked her if there was anyone else that Julie was interested in and she told me no. Julie confided in her that she was not sure about marrying me. She told me she just had to tell me this as she did not want me to be blindsided. I was devastated. I started putting more effort into making our relationship more exciting and planning more dates etc. 
Mindy was also helping me through this time, and telling me more about what Julie told her. Eventually, before Thanksgiving, Julie told me that she loved me, but she wanted to take a break for a month to live alone. She said that she just wanted to live alone for a month to make sure she wanted to marry me. I was completely heartbroken. I asked her if she wanted to pursue someone else. She told me that was not the case, and I better not do anything stupid either. She loves me with all her heart, but she just wants to stay away from me to make sure that she is marrying me for love, and not because she is used to being with me. I did not understand that at all. I told her, that if she is not sure after 4 years if she wants to marry me, then maybe we should just break up. We had a big fight and broke up after a few days. As our lease was ending, we decided to part ways in December. She got a new apartment and I kept our old apartment and just took her name off the lease. After the breakup, I was feeling very lonely, as I was not used to being in the apartment alone. I didn't want to keep on being sad and hence invited a bunch of friends for a New Year's party. I also invited Mindy. We had a good time, and my friends were doing their best to cheer me up. Mindy also mingled with my friends and it was good. Mindy decided to stay back to help me clean up and we hooked up that night. I felt guilty, but Mindy did cheer me up. Since then, we have hung out almost daily at my place. I am still sad about Julie, but I won't lie, being with Mindy does make me feel happy. She is so sweet and caring. Last Sunday, we woke up and someone was banging on the door. I went to open it and it was Julie. She looked furious and started yelling at me. She kept on accusing me of cheating on her. I told her I most certainly did not cheat on her, and she was the one who broke up with me. Mindy was also at my apartment. Julie was just angry at both of us. She started calling Mindy a manipulative jerk and told me that Mindy was the one who suggested to her that she should take some time away from me to understand her true feelings. I calmed her down and asked her to explain herself. She told me that ever since our marriage talk, she told Mindy about it and Mindy kept on asking Julie if she was sure about marrying me. Mindy suggested she take some time to herself to understand her true feelings and that, I will understand and give her space. When I said no, Mindy convinced her that I was so controlling that I could not even give her one month to herself and convinced her to break up with me. Mindy told me that she did not say these things, and these were all Julie's ideas and she was just there during these conversations. She did tell Julie that she told me about some of the things so that I get a chance to make things right with her over the last few months. That made Julie more angry and she started accusing me of emotionally cheating on her. Julie told me that the last few weeks have made her realize that we were meant to be together, but she now cannot believe I could move on from a four-year relationship in a week. On one hand, I want to believe Julie, but she broke up with me for no fault of my own. Mindy was there for me when I was down, but now I also doubt her. She suddenly started talking to me out of the blue as we were never really close before, and immediately became my support after the breakup although Julie was her close friend. Am I the jerk to emotionally cheat on Julie? Should I have told her about Mindy's texts? Should I have not moved on from her so quickly, even though Julie broke up with me? I was just hurting and Mindy was right there to support me. I need advice from someone with a clear mind on what the heck is going on? Update, my ex-girlfriend told me my current girlfriend sabotaged our relationship. I messaged Julie every day since then, to try and talk to her. She did not reply to my messages. I was not sure if she blocked me. Mindy was constantly trying to message me, asking if we could meet and talk about it. On Wednesday, one day after posting, I decided to message Mindy. I told her to tell me everything she said to Julie truthfully. I told her I would go no contact, if I found out that she was lying. Mindy wanted to meet me in person or talk to me on the phone, but I wanted everything in writing. She messaged me that Julie always said good things about me for all these years. When Julie told her about us talking about getting married in 2024, she was happy for both of us. However, Julie started telling her that she had cold feet and was not sure if she wanted to marry me because of issues she observed about her parents' marriage. One day Julie told her she wanted to take a break from me. She was not sure about her true feelings for me. That was the time Mindy told me about Julie's behavior as she felt bad for me, as we were already telling our families about the engagement plans. After our fight, she said that Julie was extremely upset and told Mindy that she would never marry me. She said that the only reason Julie came back was when she heard that I was moving on as she is jealous of us. She also said that I was a good guy, and hopefully, I see that what we have is something special. I just said okay and told her I needed time. I kept on messaging Julie once a day to at least talk to her once. It was heartbreaking to think that she may have blocked me, and may never talk to me again. On Friday afternoon, Julie finally replied. She said she wanted to meet me and told me she would come to our apartment on Saturday afternoon. I cleaned the place up and was just feeling deep guilt from inside before facing her. When she came in, she looked like a shell of herself and completely broken. I sat on our sofa, but she chose to sit away from me. We asked how we both were, but it was clear that none of us were doing well. I started apologizing but she stopped me. She asked me to let her finish and not to interrupt her. She had brought her little notebook and had written down things she wanted to say to me. She told me that she truly loved me, but after we discussed getting married, she started feeling scared of the next big step. She thought those feelings were normal and would go away. So, she decided to not discuss her concerns with me. It kept on eating her from inside and she made a mistake to talk to Mindy about them. She said that she wanted to say everything to me now, so I don't get second-hand information about why she was distant and broke up with me. She said that her parents had a very rocky marriage, though they were together until her mom passed away in 2021 during the pandemic. Her parents argued constantly, and she always thought her mom did not love her dad. However, her mom was extremely dependent on him for everything, and her dad knew it and hence, didn't treat her well. She never wanted to be like her mom after the marriage. However, as we lived together, she started seeing some of those issues in our relationship. 
For example, when we met, Julie had a lot of credit card debt and was bad at managing her money. I helped her with that. Even though we have separate finances, I ended up managing all her finances, investments, etc. At her request, to the point that she did not know or understand where her money exactly was. She also said that we always enjoy making nice meals for dinner every day. However, whenever I work late, she completely loses any motivation to cook and ends up eating cheese and crackers like a toddler for dinner. She also complained that in the last four years of our relationship, I have never said no to her for buying anything. She feels that I coddle her, and she just got comfortable with all the luxuries and things I can provide for her. She talked about this with Mindy and while Mindy initially just listened to her, she told her around September that one of her cousins also had the same issue. She decided to stay away from her fiancé for a month and within a week, she realized how much she missed him and never had doubts again. When Julie asked for a break, all she wanted to do was to live with her best friend for a few weeks, to see if she was just too codependent on me. She knew I was planning to propose during our Christmas trip to my parents' house, and when I told her that she could not take a break, she just freaked out and broke up with me, as she did not want to be engaged without knowing for sure that we won't end up like her parents. After this, she asked me when I started meeting Mindy, and how many times we met. I opened my chat messages with Mindy and handed her the phone. I told her I met Mindy only once in September, where she told me that Julie wanted to break up with me because she was not happy with our relationship. I already had noticed Julie's distant behavior and when I asked her, the only answer I got was, I am fine, we are fine. Due to my insecurities, I tried to hold on to Julie and started coddling her more, planning more expensive dates, and trying to spend more time at home. When Julie asked me for a break and to stay away from me for a few weeks, I thought that was the final step before the breakup, and broke down and fought with her, which led to our breakup and her moving out. At this point, Julie's voice started cracking up. She asked me when Mindy contacted you after the breakup. I pointed her to the messages. Mindy initially just started sending me memes to cheer me up, and I just used to respond with, thanks or a thumbs up. However, the messages started getting more frequent and she offered to talk to me in case I needed help. She asked me what I was doing for Christmas and New Year's, and when I told her I was inviting a few friends, she told me that she does not have any plans for New Year's, and I invited her. Julie stopped me there. She told me she did not need to hear the details after that. She told me that when she moved out of our house after our fight, she thought she was just not ready to get married to me. She stayed with her friend for two weeks and then got her new apartment in January. She told me that she was miserable and missed me badly. It became more acute, when she moved into the apartment alone, and could not stay there for even one night. Her best friend is currently staying with her in the new apartment. She realized she could not live without me within a week of living there. When she asked one of our mutual friends, on Saturday, about how I was doing, she told her about the party and told her Mindy was there. It did not make sense to her why Mindy would be at the party. She concluded that Mindy and I were having an affair during our relationship and that was the reason Mindy must have tried to break us apart, by constantly telling her that she should not get married if she had doubts. When she saw Mindy in our apartment on Sunday, she completely broke down. However, when she learned that Mindy was also talking to me and telling me the opposite things, she realized how naive she was to throw everything away without properly talking to me first. As hurt as she is seeing me with Mindy, she also does not want to lose me. She kept on calling herself an idiot and apologizing for not telling her concerns to me sooner. I sat next to her and tried to hug her, but she moved away. She asked me if I was willing to still be together, and I told her I would give anything to get her back. She told me she was also willing to forget what happened, but she had a few conditions. Her first condition was that I cut contact with Mindy. I block her everywhere and never contact her again. If I see her standing in front of me, I act as if she is invisible. I was okay with that. Secondly, she has already signed up for individual therapy and is on the waitlist. She wants us to do couples therapy so that we can talk about all the concerns we have and work through them. We also decided to hold off our engagement or marriage until we both can get into couples therapy. I was also okay with that too. Finally, she wanted me to forget the last month as a bad nightmare and never talk about it again. And if I ever make a, we were on a break joke, she will punch me in the face. This was the first time we both smiled. I asked her what she was going to do about Mindy as they work together. She said the biggest punishment for Mindy is to know that she did not succeed in breaking us up. She wants Mindy to see how happy she is with me, she wants Mindy to be there when she flaunts her engagement ring in the office and gets jealous when we get married. We hugged and I felt so relieved that I had a chance to make things right for her. I asked her to stay and she agreed. The rest of the evening was nice. We ordered DoorDash and watched reruns of Top Chef while cuddling on our couch. In the morning, we discussed moving back in together. I want her to move back to our old apartment, but she wants a fresh start and asked me if I am willing to move into her new apartment. Her new apartment is tiny compared to our current apartment and also not in the best neighborhood, but we will talk about it more and decide. I also will have to deal with the issue of having two 12-month leases, and how to get out of one of them. Currently, Julie went to her apartment after lunch to get some of her stuff for the week and I am writing this post. I am just so lucky that I did not lose Julie despite my terrible actions over the last month. I just hope that I will be able to work things out and get married soon, and this whole incident is a small bump in our perfect relationship. I also don't know how to address the issue where she feels coddled by my behavior and feels like I'm making her codependent on me. It's just my personality and I need to work on that during couples therapy. However, any tips from you guys are welcome on how to make her feel less codependent. Thank you for all for everything.